Hi, and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. It is Friday, and we are going to talk some sports with Val. It has been a busy week. Obviously, girls' basketball sectionals getting underway on Tuesday. Semifinal round getting ready to go tonight. So, uh, some boys' games thrown in there as well. We had wrestling sectionals last Saturday. So, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Steve, did you know that the Grace College men's basketball team is 21 and 0, ranked number one? I did. And they. They had that big game with Indiana Wesleyan, and everybody thought that would be a big showdown. Indiana Wesleyan ranked number five. 99-71, Grace won by 28 points. That wasn't yeah. even close. Coach yeah. Moore doing a fantastic job at Grace College. Yeah, he's got a uh, great team, and uh, he's just rolling through the uh, Crossroads League, wow. and I can't wait to see what happens when he gets into the uh, NAIAs. That's a conference where nobody tends to roll through. Right. Yeah. Right. It's like the Big Ten mm -hmm. in, uh, in small school basketball it's mm -hmm. it's a tough conference there's a lot of good teams wesleyan obviously one of the uh perennial powerhouses they've been yeah. national champions before so yeah some good things going on over at winona lake here's another trivia question how many sectional titles has north miami won in wrestling in wrestling they just won one on saturday so how many have they won total now probably one correct answer is two they have won two okay. when was the first one well, I'm going to guess probably with the prowess they had back in the uh, 90s in uh, football, I'm going to say 94. That's what, that would have been my guess. It was actually 1979. Oh, my. They just <laughs> won their first sectional in 45 years. Congratulations to Coach Hoover and his team. They were second in the TRC behind the Zebras, and then they just won the Peru sectional. Wow. Wow. What a great job for them. Yeah. I, and, and I know Coach Grant helps out Coach Hoover. And, yeah. Uh, just a great, great job. I think they had four or five sectional champions. Great job. Well, I know we talked about them a lot last year when we were down mm -hmm. there at Peru for the sectional with Rochester and, and how good of a young team they had. Yeah. And, wow, they really proved it there. Yeah. Didn't hurt, though, that there was uh, one team that had moved to a different sectional. Didn't hurt. No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so great stuff there. Though, While you're talking wrestling sectionals and wrestling sectional champions, let's go to Plymouth. We were up there on Saturday and the Rochester Zebras, you know, a new sectional location for them this year, but same result. Yeah, same <laughs> result. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it got up to, a, the, the, the final round got up to a tough start when uh, Grant Holloway lost to Alonzo Shantia of Plymouth. And you could tell Shantia was just a bigger kid. Uh, in fact, Clint Gard told me afterwards that Shanti had actually dropped down from 113 to 106. And you don't see many seniors at 106 either. Mm -hmm. And there is Lane Horn. Um, well, Cole Kramer of Plymouth got him to the second period. There's something to be said for that. But finally, <laughs> Lane just kind of overwhelmed him, got his shoulders to the mat, and was able to get the pin. I think Kramer actually was on the mat longer than uh, all of his opponents from the uh, conference and earlier in the sectional combined. Right, right. <laughs> his first two matches have been pins by, were pins in 15 seconds each. And uh, DJ Basham wrestled uh, Seth Wright from Plymouth, and uh, Wright was able to get the win six to two in the championship. But DJ does advance by finishing second. Um, Talk with Klingard afterwards. He wants DJ to be a little bit more aggressive, be a little bit more offensive uh, moving forward as he gets to the regional. Wyatt Davis wrestled a very good wrestler in Caden Smith from Plymouth. They had wrestled earlier in the year at the Bob Reed Super Duels, and Smith won that one, and he won this one as well, 8-3. to three. Um, Again, Wyatt had a very good... I mean, Smith was just an outstanding wrestler. Wyatt wrestled very, very well to get to the finals. Hardly a shame to lose to Smith, but... Uh, moving forward, Clint Gard said he'd like to get Wyatt better on his feet. Mm -hmm. uh, Ethan Amoskita, to get to the final at 157 was a great accomplishment. He beat the number one seed along the way. That was DJ Depke of Winnemac, but he, he ran into Aaron Ross of Warsaw in the final. Ethan got off to a 2 to nothing lead, but Ross came back and wound up winning 7-2. to two. And so Ethan wound up getting in second place. And then 165, Brant Beck versus Vincent Prater of Triton. And again, how about that for an athletic move? And he gets the pin in, what, a minute and seven seconds? Well, it, Brant Beck and athletic moves are one and the same. Yeah. <laughs> he can do them, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Declan Gard took on Talon Garner of Winnemac in the final. And it was 
Uh, I talked to Declan afterwards. He said Garner is one of the strongest kids he's faced all year. Um, uh, but Declan really was in control of the match most of the way. He wound up winning 6-2. to two. Uh, If you read my article about the section, Declan talks about kind of everything he did to get back uh, – to get ready for this year. Remember, he was fifth at the sectional last year. He did not. He did not advance to regional. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and this year he's a sectional champion. Colin Wean, uh, a pin over Kenny Jones of Triton. Jones had upset the number one seed from Culver Academy earlier in the day, but uh, Colin ended his Cinderella run. This was, in a lot of ways, this might have been the most impressive match of the day. Alex Deming beating Cameron Kaufman of Warsaw. Alex is ranked number five in the state, but Kaufman's ranked number seven. Yeah. I mean, he's. <laughs> He, no, was, he was no lightweight, right. and Alex almost got a tech fall. He wound up winning 17-3. to He got two near falls, and, I mean, even Clint Gard was like, boy, that Kaufman guy, he was built. <laughs> he was yeah. a specimen. Yeah. And we were like, yeah, but, I mean, Alex is, Alex is a dude, too, <laughs> and wound up winning 17-3. to He had five takedowns in that match. And then this was the match kind of everybody was waiting for. Brady Becker, number two in the state against Anthony Popey of Plymouth, number five. Um, at heavyweight, and Brady able to get a very late takedown to win five to one. He got the first takedown, and then he got the last takedown at the very end. Um, really very respectful of Popey afterwards. Said Popey was kind of when they faced earlier this year at the Bob Reed Super Duels. You know, Brady won three to two, but he said that Popey wasn't very aggressive. But again, in this match, he was really firing on all cylinders. He said he really made him work to have to win that match, and so. Um. Very, very possibly a, a rematch coming up at Penn this Saturday. Yeah. Uh, so 11, right? Uh, right. Rochester wrestlers that 11. are going to be uh, moving on to the the regional round, and it's going to be a it's going to be an inter, you know an interesting day. Obviously, Penn uh, has a lot of them there as well. And Their whole team, yeah, all fourteen, all fourteen. But I think Rochester might have more studs. Than Penn, and again, if you lose in the first round, you don't get any points. So, mm-hmm. again, um, how many? You could argue that ten of Rochester's eleven are going to be favored on the first round. Yeah, yeah, because ten ten of them are one or two in the sectional, so they're going to be going up against right. lower seeds, right, in the first round of the regional. Right now, that doesn't mean you just show up and you no. everybody shows up and wins, but they got to. But again, you have to like that. And again, Penn is. Um, you know some of their, yes, they've got some studs too, but they've also got some spots where they aren't they aren't necessarily guaranteed to win. So you got to show up and 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 do it and 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 perform. And I I'm curious to see how Rochester does. I mean, and how far they can advance kids in the bracket. Do uh, you know how many of Penn's kids were sectional champions last week? I don't know exactly. I know they've got, um, you know. Some some of the key Rochester versus Penn matches that I have my eye on at one twenty six Lane Horn against Dylan Bennett, okay, of uh, Penn. Um, Bennett really uh, he he's going to be he's ranked number twelve. Lane's ranked number seven. I think he's going to be able to he's going to be a problem. Yeah, I mean potentially for Lane. I mean he's he's going to challenge him at least. Yeah, uh, can he yeah. beat Lane? I don't. I probably wouldn't bet on it, but he's going to challenge Lane. Um, the other one is um, DJ Basham against Angelo Vargo at 132. DJ is a senior. Angelo Vargo is a freshman, oh, but wow. Vargo's ranked higher, uh, and he's got a very he's got a very good you know resume so to speak. But DJ has been wrestling as well as ever. Mm-hmm. Um, the other the other match um, that or some of the other matches, you know, Wyatt Davis could have to take on Wesley Harper or Penn in the semifinals. Um, that would, you know, it's looking like it would be Harper and Smith from Plymouth in the final, but can Wyatt kind of sneak in there? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, yeah, um, Declan Gard. I thought Declan got a really good regional draw. He could have to face Zymerian Holyfield or Zymerian Hollyfield of Penn in the final. Uh, Hollyfield is ranked number four among wrestlers going to the in this the feed into the East Chicago semi state, and Declan's ranked number five. And again, the top four at some state advanced to state. So Declan's right there. They don't think he's close. So, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if that match materializes in the in the final, and that could be big. And then, um, yeah, you know, could we have a Deming-Kaufman rematch? 
yeah. at Penn. I yeah. think that's quite possible. Kaufman might have to deal with Jonathan Neese from Laville. Neese has lost only once all year. Mm-hmm. And so Kaufman and Neese might have to tangle in the semifinals. And so Alex should have an easier road to the final. And then will we have another... Uh, you know, Brady Beck and Popey look like they're headed for a, a rematch, like we mentioned earlier. So, yeah, uh, yeah so we, um, some those Rochester versus Penn matchups could be crucial. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting day. What time did the preliminary start? N- uh, 9 a.m. is when the ticket round starts. So the get there. at 9 a.m.? Yeah, get yeah. there early. Yeah, that's because, the big ones. Right, because, yeah. you, you know, if you win that first regional match, you're going to semi-state, and if you lose, you're out. Yeah, and so you look at you know Ethan Amoskita. He's taking on Isaiah Rivas of South Bend Riley, senior versus senior. Winner goes to semi state. Losers, high <laughs> school wrestling career is over. Yeah, I mean those <laughs> are the matches that. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of heart in, the, in a, a match like that. Obviously, right, yeah. right. Neither one of them wants to go out. So yeah, I mean uh, a lot of good stuff going on there. Congratulations again to the uh, wrestlers because. Didn't know how it was all going to fall out. Going to a, a new mm-hmm. sectional site, and obviously Plymouth is a 4A school. And who had beaten Rochester in a duel earlier right. this year. Now, that's not quite the same as a you know, a sectional-style tournament, but right. still. Yeah. I mean, they got Rochester's attention, no yeah. doubt. I mean, Brady Beck said, I asked Brady Beck afterwards, he goes, I felt like we were the underdogs. Yeah. Well, and it, it was, uh, what, right about uh, going into Brady's match when, when Rochester finally regained the lead, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, right. they were they were up, and then they were down, and then uh, yeah. towards the end there, I think. I was going to say, maybe it was right around Colin Wien's match when they yeah. maybe finally regained yeah, the lead. Colin yeah, Win, Colin's win put them back out in front, yeah. I think. And then Brady and uh, Alex and Brady. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. And I'm... Colin might have to face Vinny Freeman of Penn in the final. You might have heard of Vinny Freeman's dad. That would be Marcus Freeman. He's the football coach at Notre Dame. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw him. I saw him on TV the other day. So he's he's a, he's a stud. So Colin would be the underdog probably in that match. But. Yeah. Well, Colin has just come a long ways in the last yeah. two years. I mean, he's. He's definitely one of the the key guys on this team now. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. mean, and the confidence that he's wrestling with is just really impressive. Yeah. And you know, but uh, he has know, a nice low center of gravity too. Uh, yeah. You know that that really helps. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I mean, he'll have to. You know, Colin might have to face you know Trey Dun. You know, Trey Dunning and Mishawaka, or he could have another rematch with Pete Duval in the semifinals. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good luck to uh, to all the wrestlers up at Penn tomorrow. We'll keep an eye on that. Val, you'll be up there in the morning. So uh, keeping an eye on the wrestling regional action at Penn High School up in, uh, well, Osceola, I guess, is where it's technically at, but Mishawaka, basically. So uh, let's talk a little girls' basketball here. The Rochester Lady Zebras in prelim or um, – quarterfinal i guess you would say action on tuesday night taking on knox winner gets a chance to play the tippecanoe valley lady vikings tonight so let's uh head over to the rochester high school and talk a little bit here on uh, action on tuesday well knox got off to a really good start in this game they were a four to nothing at one point um Ella McCarter, uh, you can see a little fight there in, in Ella. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a beautiful little jump step to the side there and, and put that layup in. Right, and, you know, Riley Clevenger was, she was on point all all night. Those first two couple threes were nothing but net, and, you know, Rochester was up, went from a 4 nothing deficit to a 10-6 to lead, but Knox would come back and tie the game. But then Rochester would close the quarter out on a 7-0 run, I mean that big shot there, Ella yeah. Carter, and then I, I'm, I don't think Rochester's had many 17 point first quarters this year. Yeah, they were shooting extremely well. And they would get they would get the lead at 20 to 10 at one point. And it wasn't just Riley; it wasn't just Ella. There you could see uh, Wilson with a big shot, and then Riley coming back with another three. And yeah, I think we've just gotten so used to Riley hitting threes that it's you know it's kind of second nature. But she has really, really just improved her aggressiveness this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, her ability to shoot that outside shot, and and she's been driving. That's yeah. the uh, that's the other thing that's really neat about what she's added to her game. Mm-hmm. 
There was a steal in the bucket by Qualls, and all of a sudden the game was tied 24-all in the third quarter. And then the game would be tied at 26. And then what a night. That pass by Ella McCarter to Riley, I mean, that was even more impressive looking at it on the replay. And Riley hits the three. That puts Rochester up 29-26. And they led 31, said 31-28. It was actually 31-27 at the end of three. But then this was the basically the decisive run. It was 33-31, and then maybe the biggest shot of the game by Aubrey Wilson, a three-pointer. She's just fearless. A great pet, yeah. She's <laughs> for a freshman. I mean, we don't even think you know don't even think of her as a freshman. And Aubrey was just having the time of her life out there. You know, I mean, she was just. They went on a 15-0 run. It went from 33-31 to 48-31, and they wound up winning 48-35. And. You know, 17 apiece for Clevenger and Wilson. Yeah. And Wilson had nine of her 17 in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So uh, another big one coming up for the Lady Zebras tonight as they will be hosting the 18-3 and Tippecanoe Valley Lady Vikings. And obviously a lot of changes from the regular season matchup. Valley, you know, really handled Rochester in that one. But, you know, no Macy Peterson for Valley. But they do have, I think Gabby Gonzalez played in that one, but she was... Didn't play after the first quarter. Dinged up a little bit in that and one. But came in kind of in. She was hurting going into the game and then didn't play after the first quarter. I, I think on Rochester's side of things, though, you got to look at uh, the way this team has really come together. Uh, that was pretty early in the season. I think this team really knows their roles. Mm-hmm. And I understand that Valley's pressure is going to be relentless, but I think that Rochester is better suited to handle that pressure now than they were the first time they met. I, I think so. I think, yeah, it's just hard to simulate Valley's defensive intensity. Mm-hmm. And now that they know, now that they fully know what they're going to deal with, that will help. Uh, having said that, I mean, Valley's going to pressure Rochester in a way that Knox just oh, couldn't yeah. or didn't. Yeah, I mean, they're going to feel pressure from Valley when they're doing the starting lineups. <laughs> right, I mean, right. That's, that's how quickly they're going to put the press on. Right, and I, I talked with Riley Clevenger afterwards, and she's fully aware of that. But she's, and she kind of said what we just said, that, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be better prepared to handle mm-hmm. their, their pressure. I don't think you can, uh, with, with the pressure that Valley puts on you, I don't think you can just sit there and hold the ball. I think you're going to have to... Uh, Attack. It's obviously make smart passes and then eventually find ways to attack. Yeah. And the the winner of that game obviously moves on to the championship. But there's a game before that with mm-hmm. uh, Bremen and uh, Culver Academy. And you know Bremen was pretty impressive in their opening win against uh, John Glenn. Uh, and it's a pretty uh, pretty loaded, pretty young, but pretty loaded Culver Academy team coming in. So that'll be an interesting game there as well. Culver Academy was seven and seven. Now they're fifteen and seven. They mm-hmm. won eight in a row, and they yeah. beat they beat a four A team in East Chicago, and basically just rolled through them on uh, Saturday. Uh, they beat a top five team in one A in Marquette Catholic during this winning streak. Um, Culver Academy is allowing thirty six points a game. Yeah. They yeah. are for real on the defensive end. Everybody, I think everybody talks about their offensive, kind of their offensive firepower, and you know the young kids like Heron and Combs, and you know Piper Brum's a really good shooter. Uh, you know Settlemeyer is a girl who can yeah shoot a little bit as well. But this Culver Academy team is really getting it done on the defensive end. Yeah, four really good teams yeah. left in that sectional, and uh, right. whoever wins this thing is going to be well tested. <laughs> Coming right. out of it. And you look at CGA, they beat Marquette Catholic 43 to 34. Well, 43 doesn't sound like a lot of points. Marquette Catholic allows 29 a game. They put, right. they put 43 on them. Yeah. So, They're number one in the state in defensive yeah, average, correct? Yeah. So mm-hmm. to score 43, that's not bad at all. Yeah. And that's a Marquette te- Catholic team that will probably be a, a sectional champion yeah, in yeah. their own so, division. But Bremen, I mean, I you know, I'm curious to see, you know, Bremen's probably going to want to push the pace and probably get. You know, don't don't let CGA's defense get set up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think Culver Cam will have a little bit of a height advantage, but uh, Bremen's probably that's no Bremen's probably used to that by now. I mean, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and you know, the I mean, they have their big three with Foster, Grubbs, and Kincaid. But I think you know, I like the Moyer girl for Bremen. I mean, she really um, understands her role as well. Mm-hmm. And the Shively girl too. Uh, I, I think it's going to be yeah. I, I'm really looking forward because it. it I don't know if you'd call it a contrast in styles. Just, I think it'd be a, just who can execute their stuff better. Yeah, 
So game one, Bremen taking on Culver Academy. The uh, winner will move on. And then game number two, the Rochester Zebras taking on Tippic New Valley for a right to move on to the championship game. So it should be a good night. You'll be there uh, with Caden Caleb for both games, uh, flying solo on the call for the first game. And uh, Randy will join you then with ROI on the call for the Rochester game coming up here this evening. So should be some good stuff over there at the, at the high school tonight. Really looking forward to it. We will be back on Saturday for the championship game as well mm -hmm. over there at Rochester. So you can mm -hmm. catch all that on uh, the IHSA Champions Network. Right. Uh, let's move on to the boys uh, coming into today at eight and six, five and one in the conference after a uh, big win last night on the road on a Thursday night at Southwood. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of big things there: you get a win on the road, you get a conference win, and it's on a Thursday night. Yeah, I mean that's that's big, and that's coming off of a, a couple of big wins. They won uh, against North White on Saturday at North White, a big one there, sixty-eight thirty-six. Well, Steve, let me ask you a trivia question. All right. Rochester's beat Caston 60 to 43, mm -hmm. 60, 76 54 over Northfield, 68 36 over Northwide, and 62 59 over Southwood. When was the last time Rochester scored 60 or more in four straight games? What year? Boy, I was, I'm trying to think if the. The group with Grant and and all those guys ever did that? I, don't, I, I I was shocked. I thought for sure that would be the answer. They, they didn't. They didn't. Two thousand eight. Yeah. Two thousand nine. Nine. Yeah. The, the, the team that nine. made the state finals. Yeah. They did it ten games in a row. Yeah. Uh, the, so that's the last time yeah, they've done that. Yeah. That's asking, wow. They'll be asking a lot for, to to get to ten games in a row, but yeah, sixty or more in four straight games. That's something. And Rochester scoring average is up from. 51 last year to 55 this year. Yeah. And you thought, boy, you lose Paul Leisure and Aiden Smith and yeah. Luke Hunting and, and uh, you know, those guys to graduate and Brock Bowers to graduation. I mean, yeah. you're kind of worried about the scoring. The scoring average has gone quite a bit up. Yeah. Well, let's take a look here at uh, some of the highlights from last night. We were there at Southwood last night, and, boy, it was a dandy. The uh, Southwood Knights, they got a uh, nice young team. Yeah, I mean, you know, Bryce Wilcox, uh, we knew he was their leading scorer and rebounder coming into the game. I think he was averaging about 16 and 8. Well, he had 30 and 12 last night. <laughs> and there isn't a spot on the floor where he can't score from. I was talking with Coach Perry because I didn't remember Wilcox from last year. And they were, and uh, he kind of, his minutes kind of got, his varsity minutes kind of picked up once the JV season ended last year with Southwood, once the state tournament started. And he really impressed, and he's just continued his momentum on into this year. The game was tied at 10 uh, in the first half. Uh, that was what Owen Prater, I think, finishing in the post. Owen was just tremendous last night with 17 points, and most of that in the paint scoring over Wilcox. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I don't know, do you know the number of lead changes there were in that game? Because there was a bunch. Yeah, I don't know, have the exact number. Yeah. I think there were, I, I believe there were three lead changes in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Southwood closed that first half on a 12-0 run, and here's a three-pointer from the corner by Wilcox, and Southwood went from seven points down to five points ahead at halftime at 28-23. That, that was the impressive thing to me. I mean, post-up, mid-range, and from three for Wilcox. I mean, he was he was hitting from everywhere. All right, how do you, all right, how do you guard a guy like that? <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. It's really hard. And then Tanner, I mean, this is a, this is a nice stretch here, the uh, – Three pointers starting to rain there. Tanner gets one, and then uh, Carson Pollock. And I had to look twice. Was that Carson's or is that? Um, uh, I think that was Carson. Yeah, and then Bowers hit one. I remember that. You know, Coach Malco had called timeout, and he inserted Bowers back into the game in about ten seconds after he got put back in. He eats. That's that's Carson. The other one yeah. was Bryce. Yeah. Uh, so Bryce hit one, and then Drew hit one. Yeah, and then, Bogger hit a big three. And then back-to-back, -back, because I, I thought, did I just see that one again? And no, that was another one for Carson at the exact same spot. Oh, that was right in the eye of a Southwood player. I don't yeah. know how he made that. That was just tremendous. Uh, but, boy, Wilcox, he's just so hard. And not only that, but he can put the ball on the deck for a 6'6 guy. who can put the ball on the floor and get to the hoop. That, that's another reason why he was so tough. This is just an excellent pass. Reinerts to Prater, who hits that little kind of, a, I don't know if you'd call it that kind of hook, half-hook floater. 
Well, that whole that whole sequence, I mean, yeah. just the ball movement there was excellent for yeah. the Zebras. It was 57-55. Now, here's Bogger. He missed the first free throw. This is the second one. He makes it. Now, Coach Malco had a timeout left. Southwood did not have a timeout. Coach Malco doesn't call the timeout, and he doesn't foul either. But, um, again, they, the, the key was they kept the ball out of Wilcox's hand, and they kept the ball out of Maddox Marshall's hand. And it was a... Uh, it was, uh, I forget who it was. I think it was Barney who wound up taking the three-pointer, but he didn't mm. even have his eye on the rim when he shot it. Yeah. I mean, it was just about an impossible shot, and it was an air ball at the buzzer, and Rochester won 62-59. Yeah, big win on the road, like we said, against uh, a conference opponent. Right, Just that's co- for Coach Malco. That's just his second win ever at Southwood. Really? And this is his... In how many years? Uh, this would be his 16th? 15th, wow. Yeah. Wow. That just yeah, tells you how hard nine, it is nine to years, win. Nine, nine years in his first ten and seven in his second. So he's, yeah, I think he's, I think he's two and six. And this is just the third time in the last twenty years Rochester's won at Southwood. Yeah, Coach Metcalf won there, his one time. Wow, uh, there. But yeah, <laughs> that just tells you how hard it is to win over there. I mean, it's a right, and it was a rough one last night. But the Zebras pull it out. Right. I mean, the two thousand four Rochester team that won sectional lost at Southwood. The two thousand six Rochester team that won sectional lost at Southwood. The two thousand eight Rochester team with Grimm and Barnett lost at Southwood. I wow. mean, some good Rochester teams have not won there. Yeah. Well, another tough one coming up uh, on Saturday. This is a rescheduled game. It's an afternoon game. It's a conference game on the road again as they head down to Lewis Cass. The Kings struggle a little bit, only 5-11, and 11, only 1-6 yeah. and six in the conference, but they do have uh, Johnson back. And He's back yeah, after missing eight games. Yeah. Now, he, he play, now, they lost 57-44 to Wabash on Thursday. And you knew Wabash would be motivated because mm-hmm. they lost to Lewis Cass in last year's sectional final seat. So, um, this is a team where they're really relying on that sophomore class. When you talk about Johnson, mm-hmm. when you talk about Dieter, he's a sophomore, and he led them in scoring last night with 13. And then the younger Hillis, mm-hmm. um, Brody Hillis. Yeah. They're sophomores. So, the, you know, both teams kind of rely on their sophomores a little bit. Um, Lewis Cass, and you look at their schedule, I mean, 5-11, and 11, but look who they played. I mean, they, mm-hmm. you know, they kind of inherit, you know, Coach Johnson, when he was there, put together a tough schedule, and, you know, Coach Brands and take kind of inherited that schedule. I mean, you know, I mean, when Kokomo came to town the other night, there were probably, probably more <laughs> Kokomo fans than the, yeah. that's, I mean, that sold out Lewis Cass's gym than there were Lewis Cass fans. Yeah. You think people uh, are watching Kokomo? <laughs> yeah. There seems to be, some, there seems to be some interest in the <laughs> Wildcats. In the Kokomo, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it seemed like their their schedule was front loaded with tough conference games. I mean, remember they had to play they had to play Whitco and Peru on back to back nights, Oof. and that was when Johnson was injured as it was. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, but again, um, Sebras will certainly be motivated. I mean, this is the Lewis Cast team that knocked them out of sectional last year. Right. It's more of a guard oriented Lewis Cast team. Um, yeah, I mean they were so big last year, mm-hmm. so they're they're definitely a little bit closer to what uh, Rochester is playing with size yeah. wise. It's, and... it's good to have them back on the schedule. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, Rochester Lewis Cass played many memorable games at Lewis Cass. The Brody Shane shot at the buzzer, in what I think that was two thousand eight. The, the the putback at the buzzer by Brody, and then the I think there was a game. I think it was one was Malco's first year back, and was it twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen when they won at Lewis Cass, and that was like. You know, Jordan Reinhold was tremendous in that game, and I, I just remember the confidence was like, okay, this program is getting its confidence back. And mm-hmm. when they won at Lewis Cass, so they, mm-hmm. the, these teams have played some dandy games at Lewis Cass over the years, and I, I think this could be another one. And uh, the road trip will finally conclude for the Rochester Zebras on Tuesday as they head up to Plymouth. So um, Plymouth was, an, you know, you look at their record; it's not very good, but they have been absolutely snake bit in close games. They mm-hmm. lost at Valley by one. I mean, they lost. Uh, you know they lose to to Elkhart, which was just a shocker. Uh, um, they get they, lo- they yeah, lose. Yeah, that was heart- their first lo- uh, win, wasn't it? Right. They yeah. lose a heart. You know, Plymouth lost a heartbreaker in overtime to Goshen last night. I mean, I mean, Coach Grindle's team is right there. They just have not won a close game this mm. year. So, uh, you know, and again, the Zebras would be motivated because Plymouth just boat raced Rochester at, oh, at yeah. Rochester last year. Big time, yeah. Uh, curious to see how the Zebras match up with Caden Ellery. I mean, Ellery is 6'5", but he can, he's like, 
he can play anywhere on the court. Mm-hmm. I mean, he can handle the ball. He can post up. He can. Yeah. He can. He's a good. He's a kinda, good passer. Kind of had a little bit of a coming out against the Zebras last year. Yeah, I mean, I mean we can, didn't really know a whole lot about him, but boy, we did after the game. He can handle it. He can pass it. He can shoot it. He can post up. He yeah. can do just about anything. And their their guards are kind of sneaky, athletic too. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you know, the Walters kid can shoot, and the the two Wolf brothers. Um, Preston Wolf is he's really quick, mm-hmm. so that, that'll be an interesting challenge. Yeah, but of course the real big the real big game is next Friday uh, when the Apaches come to town. I mean, right now that's going to be a key game. And assuming that, assuming that Rochester can get by Lewis Cass, that's going right. to be a huge game right. in the TRC race and kind of a huge sectional preview. Right, because Wabash is just on fire right now. They won the Wabash County tournament and they have continued on with that momentum. Yeah. And, of course, their big three with Ford, Wright, and Daughtry have just been tremendous. Wright has gone over 1,000 points. Daughtry's gone over 1,000 points this year. I then think Ford set the school record for three-pointers in a career. <laughs> That's all they've done. That's all they've done, That's all yeah. they've done. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've we've been talking about those yeah. kids for a long time. Right. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move uh, over to the swimming. The boys uh, wrapping their season up with a big win uh, versus Plymouth the other night. Really nice win, yeah, 103-75. to 75 And... Jake Cipher was great again, like always. He won the uh, hundred freestyle, and he won the hundred backstroke. I'm not known for, Jake, not known for the backstroke, but hmm, no. <laughs> again, you know, Stephanie Brown yeah. likes to kind of mix things up, especially this time of year. J- yeah. One minute point oh eight in the backstrokes, so almost under a minute, and then in the fifty ones for the hundred freestyle. Huh. And then Tanner Reese is back from his injury, and he swam really well in the fifty free. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, the the relays did really well. Lane Shank was on two different winning relays. Reese Johnson swam well. Uh, Wes Steininger uh, uh, won the, I think it was the uh, 100 Butterfly. And, you know, I mean, Wes is just great in that event. So, yeah, a really nice team win where everybody seemed to contribute. Mm-hmm. Noah Riffle was on one of those relays. So, yeah, yeah it just seemed like everybody kind of played their part. And, of course, Peyton Brooks went in diving again. Peyton has just been... yeah. On a roll there, especially since winning the TR, including winning the TRC. Yeah, senior night for the uh, boys there as well, and uh, yeah. you know, great group of uh, you know guys led you know Wes and Jake and Lane and yeah, they, I mean, they, they, have, a, a lot, they have a lot of fun together, but they're yeah. like accountable to each other as well, you know. Yeah. They, yeah. So good, good group of kids there. It's going to be uh, you know, it's always tough to to watch them move on, but it's always gratifying to, to see them have success in, in, in the next level and right. what they do on their you know with their uh, lives from here out. Right, and so, now, now the taper starts. They won't swim again until their sectional, which doesn't start until February 15th, so yeah. almost two weeks of rest. And yeah. I talked with Wes. He said, that, I talked with Wes Steininger. He's like, yeah, they're still, he's still going to be lifting, mm-hmm. but they just don't swim as much, but they'll still yeah. be in the weight room. Yeah, let their bodies heal from yeah. all that. Uh, girls prelims last night at Warsaw. I know this is a, a young squad for the Rochester Zebras. Do we have any results from that? Yeah, congratulations to Kylie Hasselby, who made it to the consolation race in the 100 backstroke. But that was it. She's hmm. the only girl who will be swimming on, definitely swimming on Saturday. Okay. And so no Rochester girls made the finals, but Kylie made the consolation race in the 100 backstroke. And just wanted to give a shout-out to Sienna Gudis. She made it as an alternate in the 200 free or the 500 free so just okay. in case somebody can't make it sienna will could step up yeah uh, and then diving is saturday morning the diving prelims are saturday morning and then the diving at nine and then the diving finals are mixed in with the swimming finals at 1 p.m and kylie has to be in that as well okay uh it, no seniors for them right are there any uh, seniors on the girls side i i don't believe so yeah so They'll be coming back next year and, you know, continuing to uh, work on progressing. And right. Have right. A, Again, this is just a very, very young team. I mean, yeah. a lot of girls who had never swam competitively before. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's take a break here. And uh, when we come back, we'll, we'll talk some about the Argus Dragons and the cast and comments on our next segment here, Talking Sports with Val. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trusts to appeals and guardianships, Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future.
Stop on by to In Yards Hardware for all your home project needs. With a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line Valspar, you can be sure that Inyards will supply you with the most top rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out Inyards Rental Selection to get you going. Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574-223-4920 to see how Inyards friendly staff can help you. Paysetters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Paysetters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.paysettersre.net. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can bank on the go. With the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app, you can check account balances, transfer money, view account history, deposit your checks, and pay your bills. If you want your mobile banking done easy, download the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app today. The app is available for both Apple and Android phones and tablets. Just type in First Federal Savings Bank in the search bar and look for the white star with the green background. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val, and uh, moving on to the Argus Dragons. Let's talk uh, Argus Lady Dragons basketball. They are setting at 10 and 12, still alive in the tournament, as they won their opening round game on Wednesday night versus Westville. That was coming off of a uh, a win on Saturday. They added a game at Argus on Saturday versus Plymouth. And picked up the win there, forty-five, forty-one. Yeah, that was the first time in at least at least twenty years that they had played Plymouth. Yeah, at least, and might have been closer to twenty-five. Big game and, for uh, big game for Morgan Barkus there. Obviously, Samantha Redinger doing her stuff, but Morgan Barkus added fourteen points on four three pointers. Right. in the win, to th- they won. Redinger only had eighteen. I mean, if you told me they'd win a game where Redinger would have less than twenty. Mm-hmm. And if you told me that they'd win a game where Redinger wouldn't hit a three-pointer. Right. And if you told me they'd win a game in which they trailed by six points going into the fourth quarter. I mean, wow, what a win that was. Right. And not only that, but they held Lena Jones to two points in that game. Mm-hmm. So they got it done on the defensive end as well. We know what Lena can do. I mean, she can right. She can light it up. And so that was a great win. And then the Westville game, well, that was just a different – Westville was a totally different matchup, though. Because Westville has some size in a way that Plymouth doesn't. Yeah. Let's take a look at that. We had a little bit of an off night uh, Wednesday night, so we were able to uh, run up to John R. Nelson and catch the game for the Argus Lady Dragons as they took on the Westville Lady Blackhawks. And some family affair, if you will, with the the Redinger and... uh, Andrea Benefield, of, right there. Yeah, you can see she's a. Uh, you talked about the size. She's six foot tall. Yeah, <laughs> and she's every bit of six foot tall and uh, a junior. So, but just really, just athletic and moves so well, and she can, you know, play out on the court. And Westville got off to a great start, up nine to two. Sam warms up a little bit, mm-hmm. though, at that point, and then uh, they get a big one from uh, Olivia Lead, the kind bounce from the yeah. rims there at uh, Culver. Yeah, it had to feel pretty good to be down 9-8 to eight after after one quarter, and then uh, they get on a run here in the second quarter. This was a three-pointer by Redinger. Tough shot right, right at the halftime buzzer to go up by 9. But, you know, what Westville, the adjustment they made, and kudos to Coach Marshall, is they they were having trouble with Argus's 3-2 zone. So what they did is they started kind of entering the post from the side yeah, instead of from on top, and all of a sudden they were able to get that angle to Benefield. Yeah. And she got going, and um, they would eventually tie the game at 28 on these two free throws. Again, Argus had led by nine at the half. This is a put-back bucket by Redinger. Kind of a loose ball, and she puts it in with about two seconds to go in the quarter. Argus left 30-28 to 28 going into the fourth. Bucket from the high post by Benefield ties the game. And then it's kind of a just a weird carom off the board. It didn't touch the rim or the net, but 
Ellie Bolenbacher puts it back in. I made a 32-30. And then watch this. Fake the pass. Go glass. Count the goal and a foul. Three-point play by Redinger. I made a 35-30. This was the other big one. Three-pointer by Morgan Barkas to go up by eight. 40-32. Uh, Morgan has a, a way of mm-hmm. hitting big shots. Yeah. I mean, she just she doesn't score a ton, but she steps up and, well, she just seems to hit those big shots when they need them. Mm-hmm. And then this was kind of that crazy play. There was a travel call called on Benefield as they were scrambling for a loose ball. and But eventually they had to foul. I mean, first of all, Sam dribbled off about nine seconds off the clock, then got fouled, then hit the two free throws with, what, 3.3 seconds to go, and Argu- basically clinched the game as Argus won 47-43. Redinger was just tremendous again, 34 points. She went 11 for 11 from the foul line. Yeah. Uh, she had 34, and Benefield had 21. So you know, yeah. a big scoring output from the uh, the cousins there in that one. Right. And, uh, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Benefield won't mind seeing her cousin graduate this year. Yeah. Cause that's two years in a row where they got knocked out of the sectional round by the Argus Lady Dragons. I am two games by seven points combined in the two games. Yeah. Just two heartbreakers. Yeah. So uh, Argus will uh, advance. They will play the Triton Trojans tonight. Triton coming in at 10 and 13. They already met, obviously, in uh, November. Triton won that one at Triton, 32-46. I mean, yeah, that was Argus's second game of the year. Yeah, and you talk about uh, teams that don't want to see Argus. Uh, Triton got knocked out of the sectional last year by these Argus Dragons. So uh, maybe they do want to see him. I don't know. We'll right. Uh, yeah, um, w- yeah, where is Triton's... Mindset going into this game because they they beat Trinity Greenlawn forty two to eleven in the first game on Wednesday. I mean that was yeah. I mean they barely broke a sweat. Right, exactly. Yeah. So where are they at? Have they uh, where, where's their focus level at? Or you, you certainly don't want them feel they, they play that game was so easy. You don't want them if your coach uh, crawl. You don't want them feeling overconfident. Mm-hmm. Your, your girls feeling overconfident. Uh, but again, it's an experienced group with um, with Addison Beers and, and Faulkner. Those are your leaders, uh, and, and I, I think, you know, certainly they're the favorites going into this game. They held Redinger to 19 when they played them earlier this year. How will Argus go about trying to get Sam open? But, I mean, Argus is, you know, again, I, I don't think it's necessarily changing the way they play. It's just just do your stuff better and do it more efficiently. I think the big thing for Argus, too, is Alicia Sarver, is if she's available, because right. they played five girls on on Wednesday. Yeah, we should mention that, yeah. yeah. I mean, Leah Pizzuto, who was <laughs> kind of used sparingly earlier in the season, she played the entire game. Yeah, no subs. Yeah, yeah. and so, so. I, I talked with Scott Jennings afterwards. He said um, he called Alicia's injury a mild concussion, and he, he Alicia was dressed for the game. And yeah. He, he said, I thought about putting her in there but I didn't against Westville, but I didn't think it would be fair to her because she hasn't practiced much lately. Mm. But clearly, I, I interpreted that as Coach Jennings saying that he has not ruled out Alicia for the Triton game. Yeah. And, you know, with the size of the uh, Trojans, they're going to need her. Yeah. Because she does bring a little bit more size than the Leah Pizzuto. Right. So... Yeah, that's going to be the big key. I mean, and, uh, and another key is Ellie Bolenbacher's got to be able to finish her on the rim. Yeah, and that's, I mean, it's it's not easy. Yeah, but she, I mean, she did for what might have been the biggest basket of the one of the biggest baskets of the game, if not the biggest basket of the game against Westville. Right. Well, that ought to be a good one tonight. Um, game number two, game number one there at Culver will be uh, Marquette and OD. Um, yeah, OD got, played a game on Monday, a regular yeah. season game on Monday. They played right. River Forest because both teams got by, so they put to, got a game together, and OD won that. So, again, OD is going to want to push the push the pace, I think. I don't think they want Market Catholic's defense to get set. They mm-hmm. get their heels dug in defensively. It's going to be a hard time for OD to score. Yeah. But, again, OD, their top, uh, excuse me, Market Catholic, their top two scorers are a sophomore and a freshman. Yeah, yeah, young squad. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, on the boys' side, the uh, Argus Dragons setting at 5-8. and eight. Um, They had a road win at uh, Lakeland Christian on Friday, 62-50. They lost at home Saturday to Busco, 44-45. 
And then uh, Thursday night, last night, they were uh, at Triton, and they lost that one 45-59. to Well, scoring has not been a terrible issue for them. It's I think it's a lot of it's kind of... Again, it's kind of the some some of it is depth because you know Argus only plays six guys on a nightly basis, and again three of the six are freshmen who are getting their getting their feet wet and it's just you know they're being thrown into the deep end of the pools mm-hmm. so to speak. You know that Lakeland Christian game. I mean they were down at halftime in that game and that was that was a Lakeland Christian team that came in with one win. I think Sean Richard had a huge second half and they were able to pull that one out. And the Cherubusco game that was a real disappointment. Cherbusco came in two and eleven, but won by ten at Argus. Mm-hmm. And then you know again Richard with eighteen and Stoltz with sixteen against Triton, but they lose that one. So um, confidence wise, uh, you know trying to build their confidence, I think, and and trying to find a way to get stops. I know Gage Riffle from Triton at twenty five last night, which was a huge game for him because that's a Triton team that's kind of more of a balanced scoring type of team. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and obviously he knew Triton would be ready to go for that game after Argus knocked him out of last year's sectional. Yeah. So we'll see how Argus responds because they got five in a row at home coming up. Yeah, they got three coming up this week right. with uh, teams with all the seven wins. They've got uh, tonight versus or Saturday versus Couts, Tuesday at home versus Caston, and then the, of course the the big one on uh, Thursday, the Bell game with the Culver Cavaliers coming in. Right, and then yeah, and then South Central after that, but. Uh, Again, Kyle's is a new addition to the schedule, so we'll see. When I think of Kyle's, I think of up tempo. They're mm-hmm. going to want to. They're going to be pretty athletic, and they're going to want to push the ball up and down the court. And then, the you know, Caston. I'm a, Argus has had Caston's number, going back to Coach Mawson's days, and Coach Breeden is now two and zero against Coach Davis. So, curious to see how they do. Because remember, two years ago, Caston came in red hot to Phil Waybright and. Yeah, Argus won, I think, by 14. I mean, that game was, I mean, Argus led by double digits just about the whole game. Yeah, they did have a a, a young man on that team, though, that was uh, pretty good that's not there right yeah, now. That so. was, yeah, JJ was yeah. Is, was a tough matchup for everybody. And then, But Argus won at Caston last year, so I'm mm-hmm. uh, curious to see that. That will be an interesting game. And then the Bell game will be uh, interesting as well just because the point guard, Sean Richard and Jack Rogers, oh man, two high scoring point guards who right. are just uh, scoring points like you and I breathe. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> so that will that you know that and that will be an interesting uh, game as well. Yeah, because be and again, Argus has just dominated this rivalry. Yeah, and oh, Culver yeah. is just hungry. Yeah, the, bell, the bell has been at Argus for quite a few yeah, years. Yeah, it would mean a lot for Culver to win that game, so, especially if they can win it at Phil Waybright. So trivia question for you: When was the last time the Culver won the Bell? I was there for it. I think it was twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen. Yeah, I think it was twenty fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember Everett Kruger had a, was really good in that game, and Nate Carnegie was really good in that game. Yeah, yeah. That would have been. I think that would have been fifteen, and that was at Argus, correct? It was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that one. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean that's that's been a little while. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, it should be a it should be a fun week for the uh, dragons there. Uh, let's move down the road a little to the Caston Comets and let's talk Caston girls basketball. They uh, got a big win to open up uh, sectional play over at South Newton versus West Central, and it was sixty two to thirty seven and. Casting right out of the gate, they said, "Yeah, this ain't happening for you today, yeah. West Central." I mean, they just blew them out of the gate there in that first quarter. Right, Casting led that game forty-nine to sixteen at halftime. Mm. So they led by thirty-three at the half, and they won by twenty-five. Yeah, twenty-six, I think, in the first quarter. Yeah, <laughs> uh, four, forty-nine points in the first half. Casting scored forty-nine points in a game only twice in their last eight games of yeah. the regular season, and they scored yeah. forty-nine and a half. Yeah. So I, I don't think, you know, other than maybe the Smith girl uh, and uh, I, West Central just couldn't handle Kasson's physicality. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, I, well, like we said in last week, buy stock in the Lady Comets. Yeah. I, know the, I, know the, I know they didn't finish their regular season in an ideal way, but I'm, I'm, I wasn't overly concerned. After seeing Bremen play in person, I, now I, I, yeah. uh, it's understandable how they can lose at Bremen. At Bremen, yeah. That's a really good Bremen team. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they got one and sixteen at South Newton tonight at South Newton, 
shouldn't be a problem there, um, yeah. possibly setting up a rematch then on Saturday with the uh, Tri-County Cavaliers. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. if you can buy a ticket at South Newton tonight, I can't say you're going to see two really competitive games. I don't think North White should give Tri-County too much of a problem, right. and I don't see South Newton making cast and break too much of a sweat. I think yeah. we, we, are, we know what, what matchup we're going to see on Saturday night. Yeah. And, of course, Tri-County handed the uh, Lady Comets their first loss of the season. So, right. yeah. uh, Caston's going to have some motivation there, There's Some obviously. motivation there. And, again, you know, we, I think we talked about the reasons for that. You know, why Tri-County won. They shot the ball really well. Caston shot the ball extremely poorly. Uh, and, and really, though, it was the first quarter that kind of put that game where right. it was. I mean, Tri-County was up by 13 at the end yeah. of one quarter, and they wound up winning by five. Yeah. So, Caston, you know, basically outplayed them. Yeah. The last three quarters. And, again, I'd, I'd say this, again, Tri-County, you know, they they shot threes really well. For whatever reason, they didn't shoot free throws very well, but they still won that game. Um, but Caston, if they can get the third double-figure score, uh, that you know, we, and we talked about that. We've talked about that a lot. Zimpleman had 24 scales and Douglas had 12 each against West Central. Yeah. So they can just keep that up. Uh, that will be key. I, I think there's a little motivation there, obviously, to to get back to uh, you know get back at Tri County for that loss. Mm-hmm. But also, I mean, they've you know they've been looking for the sectional championship for four years, and uh, I think that motivation is there for this Cast and Comets team. And you know, I think they're I think they're poised to do what they haven't done since 1985. Right, and I think having again the way this the the again I I'm not too worried about their defense. Uh, again, I guess everybody, you know, Tri-County can shoot the ball well enough, but boy, if, if they're living by the three, and again, it's just so easy to die by the three, and um, I, I'm sure Cass will close out better. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure Coach Douglas has been watching film of Tri-County, and they have a game plan ready to go for Saturday night already. Uh, obviously, they can be respectful towards South Newton, but I mean, they, they've got they've got a game plan ready to go for Saturday night. And I, if he, who knows, he might have been holding back in the regular season game. So they they will be well prepared for Saturday night if it's Tri County. Yeah, I'm sure they were pretty vanilla with all their sets. Yeah, in that regular season game, knowing that they would probably see each other again. Right, right. But you know, it's Tri County sectional title to, to defend. Yeah, yeah. And those girls have played in big games before. So kudos to you know Zarcy and um, uh, the girl. <laughs> you 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 remember her name better than I do, but I mean they, I mean they they have balanced scoring, and that that's kind of what makes them hard to defend. They get they got you know four or five different girls who can shoot and score. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean it's it's a really good Tri County team. Mm-hmm. Don't don't get me wrong, uh, but I think the motivation from the Comets is is there, and you know they want an opportunity to to play in that regional possibly. Yeah. Oh, at home. Mm-hmm. So. That'd be uh, that'd be a neat thing to see. So, on the boys' side, the uh, Comets at seven and eight. They uh, they split um, Friday and Saturday's games. They won Friday versus Pioneer. Uh, big win there, fifty six forty seven. And ooh, Caleb Stinson was good in that game. Thirty. Yeah. Yeah, thirty in that game. He was the only guy in double figures. Yeah. He was pretty good on Saturday too, but they lost on the road at Tri County, fifty eight sixty five. That's a. I was at that game. That's a very good Tri County team. It was Zarcy and the boys team yeah, as well, and he had yeah. twenty four in that game. Yeah, that's a that's a good team. Uh-huh. I mean, uh, no uh, no shame to lose to that team, but you know, for uh, Caston, obviously they're they're in their sectional too. So right, right. Now keep in mind that game was at Tri County. If they have a rematch in the sectional, it'll be at Caston, right? Because they're hosting. Uh, and you know, uh, Stinson had what twenty three, and Zyder had twenty two or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they both had twenty plus. So. Again, uh, uh, can cast and get stops? I think that's going to be one of the key. Yeah. And, and part of getting stops is also protecting the ball. I mean, because a lot of times they get turnover prone, and that leads to fast breaks the other way. Yeah. So, um, but again, I think uh, I'm not worried about cast being able to score points. Yeah. Another big win for them last night at home. They beat North White sixty to thirty-seven. So right, yeah, it's a North White team. I saw them play last week. It's a uh, D- Dane Hood. I want to give a shout out Dane Hood of North White. He can play for just about any team in the area. He's about six three, six four. He can handle it. He can shoot it. He can drive and score. But mm-hmm. it's a North White team that's in a massive rebuilding yeah. stage. 
Uh, Comet's hosting Triton tomorrow, and then on the road, at, like we talked about, with the Argus Dragons on Tuesday. Well, we mentioned just just mentioned Triton beat Argus on Thursday night. Now they got to go to Cast, and you know the Riffle Kid has been hot. Wit Hoyo has been very good. Uh, it's a team that you know they don't have uh, Cole Shively, who, by the way, verbally committed North Central College for football the other day. Okay, that's yeah, in Naper- that. that's in Naperville, Illinois. But anyway, uh, it's a Triton team that relies on balance scoring. So again, it's going to stretch Caston's defense. Yeah. I mean, they've got to, they've got to, everybody's got to, they've got to do their switches. And I'm curious again to see how much zone Coach Davis will play. He certainly played more zone this year than he ever has already. Mm-hmm. Should be, uh, should be an interesting one there for the uh, for the Comets. And Val's getting all choked up about yeah. it. Yeah. And then another, and then a big game against Argus on Tuesday. Yeah. Where they're gonna, you know, how can they stop Sean Richard, who's just a very physical, strong point guard? Yeah. You know, I mean, Caleb Stinson's again Stinson versus Richard. That's a great point guard matchup, right. but different styles of player. Right. Sean's just can overpower you um, with his strength. He and just go downhill. Caleb relies more on his quickness. Yeah. Should be a good one. We'll be uh, keeping an eye on both of those games for the cast and comments coming up uh, Saturday and Tuesday. So let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about the Cavaliers and the Panthers here on Talking Sports with Val. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskin's is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need, no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit Kriskin'sPoolsAndSpas.com Call 574-857-3100 or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskins can help you. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Looking for an easy way to provide custom branded products for your business, school, sports team, or fundraising event? Let the Winning Edge set up a customized web store that features branded products tailored to your business, school, church, or charitable cause. With a wide variety of customizable apparel, sports accessories, office accessories, and custom tumblers, the Winning Edge is sure to provide you with the best style that suits you. Find your edge by calling 574-223-6090 or going to our website, thewinningedgeathletics.com, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Hello, sir. How can I help you today? I'm looking for a special gift. We have no tolerance for tomfoolery today. What do you mean, tomfoolery? What I said was, we have a nice selection of jewelry today. May I suggest that you give my friends at Affordable Hearing a call? Affordable Hearing offers hearing testing and unique solutions for everybody. We guarantee the lowest prices in the area and now have offices in Rochester and Logansport to serve you better. Call to book an appointment today. Welcome back here talking sports with Val. And uh, let's talk a little Culver Cavaliers here as we start segment number three. Girls' season ends at 4-18 and 18 as they lose on Tuesday night at home in the sectional to Marquette Catholic. Marquette, obviously, the, the favorite for that sectional, and it was 19-59. to 59. That was coming off of a loss uh, to end the regular season on Saturday at LaVille. They lost that one 23-45. Yeah, um, Colorado, because they didn't... Um... You know, other than Amaya Williams, they just had trouble scoring in the paint. And even Amaya, she can't really. Amaya's, you know, she gets those feeds from Grace Seabury, can finish at the rim. But um, again, this this is a Culver team that kind of lives by the three and dies by the three, and that's um, that's kind of some of the issues that they face. And again, fate, Laville and Marquette Catholic are two very good defensive teams to close the season. Oh yeah, yeah. And you know, uh, again. Yeah, it was just tough. I mean, because you know, going back to last Thursday, I know Brianna Schlemmer had that huge game against West Central, and they almost pulled that one out, uh, but uh, lost the thing by seven. But yeah, just two tough teams to close the season out on. Two athletic teams. Yeah, to close the season out on. 
uh, Grace Sieber uh, going to be graduating for Culver, a yeah. good group of seniors. I think she had eight of Culver's 19 points in that yeah. game against Marquette Catholic against an elite defensive team. So I, I just I, I admired Grace because she just kept coming at you mm-hmm. no matter how, whether they were down, whether they were up, whether they were... I, I just admire her competitiveness, and I just have great respect for Grace. Yeah. And now I think the real the key is, in a lot of ways, the key is right right now because you got to settle on, okay, are the nieces your coach coaches full time. Yeah. Uh, I, I I think you know because certainly they know the kids very well, mm-hmm. and just they need to commit to an off season program. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because you can just tell when you have a coaching change, it's just. Well, not only a coaching change, but a coaching change when they had it. Yeah. I mean, a week before the season. Right. I mean, that's that's rough. Right. Yeah. You need to have an off season. You need to get in the weight room, and you need to have a, a good June. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, so to 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 move forward, uh, but again, I mean, they're, they're you know they're obviously you know they'll miss and uh, Giselle Villegas is also graduating, and I think uh, is Hamilton a senior. No, she's just a sophomore. Okay. So, again, and I think Maddie wound up getting a lot more playing time than anybody thought she would, but okay. I think it was a yeah. good experience for Maddie. But, yeah. um, again, I just they need to get on the court more and just need to get that bond. And I think, and you know, the, the, the Nice brothers are so good at that, creating that bond. Mm-hmm. And um, just have to get in, Just it's just a matter of getting in the work and just developing the trust between coaches and kids yeah it's gonna which, be which doesn't happen overnight but yeah it, it just and who's takes... gonna be your who's gonna be your point guard with grace graduating right she's right. been pretty solid at that point spot handling the ball and and you know yeah. making the pass like you said making the passes to where you know her teammates can score yeah. so a lot of a lot of work a lot of question marks for that culver lady Cavs team as they move into uh the next season right there. So, so it's so. yeah it's just you know building an identity i, I know it's kind of a cliche but it's kind of like this is how we're going to play basketball. Yeah. And this is what we want to be known for when you see a Culver girls basketball team on the court. Yep. On the boys' side, 7-7. Uh, seven and seven, uh, They lost on Friday night at LaVille, 51-74. And, uh, again, we talked about it. They go to Argus on Thursday for the Bell game. Yeah, and they beat DeMott Christian last night, 61-53. Yes. to yes. 53, And Jack Rogers had 25. And... Uh, and how about Logan Caudell with eleven? Okay. And then Guasp had Adria Guasp had nine. So, uh, kind of getting back and developing some uh, offensive rhythm. The key for this team is going to be the t- the two things that uh, I I I I don't know if I guess I guess they keep Coach Evans. I don't know if they keep Co- Coach Evans up at night. Maybe he's up at night always. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but rebounding and free throw shooting. Because mm-hmm. uh, they really struggled from the foul line this year, and then rebounding has got to be something they got to is kind of can be kind of a worrisome as well because they don't have that one kind of big guy who just dominates the boards. You knew Laville would be ready for them because Culver's had a lot of success against Laville in recent years. Um, Laville beat him in the Bi County and then beat him again, but that, it was just a bad matchup I think for Culver this year um, mm-hmm. with Michael Good and Zarnecki who scored his thousand point and. Uh, uh, Plummer, yeah, I think I think both Plummer and Zarnecki have gone over a thousand, but yeah, that was a tough matchup. Is Zarnecki a junior? No, he's a senior. Yeah. Is Plummer a senior? Yeah. Okay, I thought it's one almost, of them was a junior. It's almost hard to believe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> finally yeah. graduating. Yeah, but yeah, uh, so they got a week to prepare for the Bell game, and that's going to be at Argus. We'll see. Again, can they get stops? Can they stop? You know, Sean Richard, and and can can. How, how do you defend him? Because, um, again, the zone, again, Sean Richards is a senior point guard who's seen a lot of different defenses. Mm-hmm. Can your can your zone trap, your zone press bother him? And then can you uh, keep Stoltz from getting in good position down low because you're going to be probably at a height disadvantage? Yeah. yeah. So those are kind of some of the defensive issues that Culver is going to have to think about as they prepare for this game. It's definitely a winnable game, though. And then on top of that, you have to get out to their three-point shooters because Austin and uh, Bel- Belden and Helms can all hit the three, mm-hmm. the three freshmen. Yeah. Well, obviously, that's always a, yeah. a much-anticipated game every year, the, the Bell game right. for uh, Argus and Culver. So we'll have that one right. Thursday. And, and then the, on Friday night, then Pioneer goes to John R. Nelson, yeah. which is uh, 
it's always tough to play Pioneer the night after the Bell game, which right. is they've done that for quite a few years now. Yeah. We'll talk about them in a minute, yeah. but big win for them last yeah. night. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's talk Pioneer. So let's start off with the girls. They finished their regular season with a 6-15 and record on uh, Friday night, the rescheduled uh, senior night with mm-hmm. uh, West Central coming to town. West Central, I think, had 12 wins on the season coming into this one. And uh, really, you know, coming off of that win on Wednesday at North Judson, uh, Pioneer looked really good in mm-hmm. this one. Um, they they actually uh, uh, senior night. Obviously, we talked about that. Gracie Hopper and, and Casey Webb, the two seniors for the Lady Panthers. But uh, right, I want I don't want to give away the ending. But uh, you know, obviously, it didn't end in a win for the Panthers. But they uh, they led actually until the last about thirty seconds of the game. <laughs> Right, and I think just, um, again, I think it's just a case of, boy, you get a spring in your step when some shots start to fall, and you get it, it helps you defensively as well. Um, again, and also West Central, probably not the most physical team that Pioneer has seen this year. They were pretty physical. They were. Okay. They were, They were. yeah, they were pretty physical. I mean, the, uh, the big girl is Bishop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um and they they were deep. They ran, uh, I think, nine girls through. Yeah. And, uh, the thing, I guess, the physical part of it to me was was their defense. So they were full court pressing uh, the entire game, and you know, kind of relentless with that kind of mm-hmm. kind of the way OD used to do it. Maybe not as good, obviously, as OD used to do it. But uh, you got to talk about Mia McCaig in this one. Mm-hmm. I mean, she was coming out uh, aggressive. Uh, she had 23 points in this game and did not score in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. I mean, she had 23 points in three quarters uh, for the uh, Lady Panthers. Mm-hmm. She was really hitting from all uh, three levels. Uh, McKenna was playing pretty good there uh, as well. I'm going to have to talk to to Kate and Caleb. I had uh, them help a little with the highlight package here. We have to teach them what highlights are of, <laughs> of a game here. A couple of uh, turnovers and a missed bucket there, mm-hmm. but uh, I want to thank them for helping out with the uh, highlights today. Yeah, but Pioneer what led by what thirteen? Was that was that their biggest lead? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they had a thirteen point lead at, at one point, and uh, you know, led by eight actually going into the to the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. You know, Lois Lair uh, only scored one point in this game, coming off of nine against North Judson, but she was big in the in the press break, uh, trying to, uh, you know, you can see they're they're running two three girls at uh, the ball carrier, mm-hmm. the ball carrier, the ball handler, pretty much every time. So, yeah, that was me again, right? Yeah, come back up by ten. But it was the fourth quarter, and when West Central really gained momentum in this game. Yeah, eight point lead. They uh, they outscored them, I think, nineteen to seven mm-hmm. in the fourth quarter. Yeah, with Stricker scoring all seven. Yeah. So, kudos to her on her effort, but just didn't get a ton of help. And West Central hit some big shots late. That was what a three pointer with like thirty eight seconds to go that put them ahead for good, and then they made it. Uh, some big free throws here. Yeah. There was a, and I don't know if they got it in here or not, but there was a uh, a nice look right. But well, actually, they don't have it in here because it was before this. But um, Mia had a, a good look at a at a three pointer that would have put Pioneer back mm-hmm. up by one, and uh, you know just missed it. But uh, you know, would have, could have, should have. They didn't. And uh, they move on six and fifteen. They uh, go to um, North Miami tonight to take on Winnemac, who won their quarterfinal round game against Wabash. So uh, Pioneer had the first round by, so they're you know coming in fresh. They haven't played since last Friday. Uh, you know, it's a Winnemac team that just won against Pioneer um, about ten days ago, right? In uh, big fashion at Winnemac, so. You know, Pioneer's going to have to, you know, try and find a way to stop uh, basically the big four. I mean, Iverson, she just 
lit Pioneer up in that game, in the regular season game. Oh, right, and she was their go-to. I mean, mm-hmm. she was like option number one. Mm-hmm. So they've, they've got to stop Iverson in the post defensively, and then they've got to have a plan for for the guards as well. Candace mm-hmm. Croft played in that game. But not a ton. Pretty sparingly, and, and she had a big game against Wabash. Against so Wabash, she's back. she scored yeah. 11, so she's back. And then Maggie Smith had 15 the other night. And, you know, Maggie was more comfortable being kind of a distributor. And then that Winnemac runs that high-low play where Piper Link can dump the ball down low to Iverson. Piper Link can do just everything, a little yeah. bit of everything. So uh, defensively, Pioneers got to have a got to be more sound. And then uh, offensively, how do you break down Winnemac's kind of changing defenses Mm -hmm. because Winnemac has got a 2-3 zone, a 1-3-1 zone, and they've got kind of a – they'll press, I'm I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how does does Pioneer handle the ball and how do they – how do they break down the zone? Can they get in those gaps? Can McKenna Stricker get in those gaps and then kick out to to Mia or or Lois Slater or other shooters? Then once she does that, can they hit those shots? Yeah, yeah. Or even Gracie Hopper can hit the – the mid-range jump shot. Yeah. You know, Winnemac kind of, uh, I don't know if they, I don't know. The favorite of that sectional, I don't know. Because you got Lewis Cass and North Miami going in game one. That's going to be a good one. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously Pioneer winning tonight would be a, a slight upset. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what they can do. Right. I mean, it's a Winnemac team that's got to be feeling really good about themselves after that yeah. big win and they put, you know, the, I mean, you know, uh, you know, with Smith scoring 15, I mean, that, what a huge lift for early three mm-hmm. point. And we'll, and we'll talk about that, but it's going to be a, a Winnipeg team that's uh, again. We've talked about their mindset is just totally different. They're, they've been playing with so much more confidence this year. Mm-hmm. Can can Pioneer kind of dig into that confidence? Can they can they can they get them? Uh, you know, and, and Winnipeg hadn't won a sectional game in five years. Yeah, they won a sectional game in five years. Yeah. So uh, to to you know to to. Can they get them off their game? Can they yeah. can they disrupt them somehow? As uh, you know, Winmax thirteen win this year, so you know coming off of four wins in Coach Stasiak's first year, that's yeah. a pretty good improvement. When was last? Okay, here's a trivia question. When was the last time Winmax won a sectional in girls basketball? Mm, was it fifteen? Yeah, it was twenty fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, that's a long ten years is a long time for mm-hmm. Winmax girls basketball. Um, obviously, they're headed in the right direction right now. Yeah. Uh, but boy, you know that was the team with Bethany Brogdon and Stephanie Shorter, mm-hmm. uh, and that was you know with under Coach Wagner. Uh, boy, ten years is a long time for. So let's see if Winnemac can can get it done tonight. Yeah. Can can get it done this weekend. They've got a shot, uh, but first Pioneers got to. They've got first. You know, it's can Pioneers stop them with Stricker and and, and McKeg kind of carrying the load offensively. Yeah. Uh, Pioneer boys five and eleven, a uh, pair of losses last weekend at Caston at South Newton, but uh, wow, <laughs> Pioneer uh, owns the Blue Jay nest this year. I don't know what the heck's going on, but uh, Anybody... the girls go to Judson and win, and now the boys last night go to Judson win yeah. fifty to forty nine in overtime. Uh, yeah, uh, can anybody explain <laughs> this team? I have no idea. You lose at South Newton, yeah, and then you beat win at North Judson. Now no Quentin, uh, no Bales, no Quinn Bales for uh, for Judson, but still, but still on the road, on the road, yeah. yeah. And McDaniel had a good, Ed is twenty one, and um, yeah, I mean, just a great, great win. And how about Braden Erickson with seventeen? I think, I think that's a season. I'm pretty sure that season I might even been a career high. I think he had five threes. Drew McKeg only had twelve, but. Um, they outscored him five to four in overtime, and Drew had all five in the overtime. Did he? So Drew came up big when they really needed him. Mm-hmm. Again, this is another team I'm really worried about their free throw shooting. They only went three for seven last night. I mean, they got to. It's hard to win these close games when you're not making your free throws. But yeah. uh, hopefully, they can get that going. But uh, yeah, great, great win. I, I, this team's hard to fit against Cast, and you know they fell behind sixteen to zero. At the start, got it, got it back down to one though. Mm-hmm. So they, they just have these these uh, moments where they they just have these lapses, which are just, eh, I mean, lapse is kind of an understatement. They just they just crater for a couple minutes in, mm-hmm. in a game. But if if they can avoid those, I think they they play pretty well. And their zone is tough because of Toloza's quickness and McKegg's quickness and and their and um, their quickness out of the perimeter and 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 Micah Rand's his quickness. Yeah. So uh, 
they're off now until Tuesday. They got a home game versus Knox, so another big conference game with the Redskins coming into the uh, right. Uh, three games in four days. Knox at home Tuesday, uh, Indiana Def on Thursday, and then they travel to Culver on Friday. Yeah. So three games in four days. Yeah. But against so a Pioneer, again, Pioneers got de- a decent amount of depth. Where yeah. Where Coach McKay can go off the can go to his bench if he needs to. Mm-hmm. But again, this is our team to figure out. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, but, but what a great, but what a great win over yeah. Jets! And I was, I think we were both like, "Wow, they beat Jets!" Yeah, I think I texted you last night because I saw that uh, I was waiting in uh, the the drive through line on the way home from Southwood, and I'm like, "Did I see that right?" <laughs> and uh, yeah, so a big win for the Panthers. So. Uh, let's take another break here, and uh, when we come back, we'll wrap things up. We'll talk Winnemac Warriors and Tippecanoe Valley Vikings here in our final segment, Talking Sports with Val. Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Since 1974, Steve Moore Agency has provided the City of Rochester with customized insurance solutions that will fit your needs. With a variety of coverage policies for business, home, auto, life, and more, Steve Moore Agency is sure to cover all your insurance needs. Call now at 574-223-3010 or stop on in at 602 East 9th Street to see what Brody Moore at Steve Moore Agency can do for you. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible, should be customized to patient needs, should strive for better health outcomes, should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over 50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.fultoncountyremc.com or call in at 574-223-3156. Welcome back here, Talking Sports with Val. We're going to wrap things up here today with some uh, talk about the Winnemac Warriors and the Tippecanoe Valley Vikings. Val, we talked about uh, the Winnemac Warriors girls uh, with the uh, win on Tuesday night, advancing to the semifinal round tonight. They are 13 and nine. Big win on Tuesday for them, defeating Wabash 51-46. Right, and you're so worried about Honeycutt going off. They Honeycutt had 15. Wilson and Boggs had 10 each. Uh, you know, to hold those three to 35. I don't know if Coach. I'd be curious to know if Coach Chaser was wild about that. But that's a man. I think it's a manageable number, mm-hmm. knowing that Wabash doesn't get a whole lot of scoring from many other players. It was actually Janica Stumbo who had eight. And that was kinda that was kinda strange. But Winnemac got off to a great start in that game. I think it was eighteen to seven after the first quarter. Mm-hmm. And they get those early threes from Maggie Smith. They get a couple early threes from Sadie Popejoy and were able to hold on and win a get a great win. Yeah. So they'll be playing tonight in game number two. I'll be down there for that yeah. one versus Pioneer and So it, again for Winnemac defensively is how do you uh, Again, you got to worry about McKegg shooting, and got to worry about McKenna Stricker's dribble penetration. You got to try and keep her out of the paint because McKenna Stricker, when she gets in the paint, she gets fouled a lot, and she shoots a ton of free throws. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is that again, I, and I don't know, I'd like to kind of get your opinion on this, but it just seems like once we get to sectional play, officials are more willing to call fouls. Uh, they, offic- they they officiate games a little bit more tightly. Um, because I think they want to – I mean, if officials are trying to advance in the state tournament as well. Right. And I think they realize that to advance for them to advance in the state tournament, they've got to call it – it behooves them to call a tighter game. 
I've seen it go both ways, mm -hmm. honestly. I mean, I've seen some sectional games where it is that kind of a, a lot tighter of a, a call, and I've, I've seen some where it's like, okay, this is the same, or even uh, they're letting them play a little bit more. So mm -hmm. I think it's maybe a little bit of a thing, but it's also maybe, uh, you know, depending on, on the crew. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, obviously for, for Pioneer to be successful, A, McKaig's got to hit, and, and Stricker's got to be able to get to the line, and, uh, there's just, you know, Coach Stasiak just has so many weapons, you know. Right. We, we talked about, uh, you know, Smith uh, going off in that game against Wabash. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you got Croft, who didn't play the, a whole lot the first yeah. time the two teams met. You know, we didn't talk much about Popejoy. She didn't do a whole lot on Tuesday, but she uh, she had 13 in, against Pioneer the first time they played. And Popejoy is really underrated defensively mm -hmm. uh, in their zones. Um in fact, their their guard group and just in general, Croft is an underrated defender as mm -hmm. well. So um, again, that that that's part of Winamax's improvement this year. That defensively, they can get stops and they can make your guards uncomfortable. Yeah, it can, you know, Coach Stasiak's going to have three or four different uh, defenses. He's going to throw at Pioneer, so they're going to have to be ready for. Oh, that. Pioneer's got to be ready for. <coughs> Coach Stasiak is not afraid to go to a junk defense. A, a triangle and two would not shock me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they ran out a little in the regular season. Mm -hmm. game. So, yeah. yeah, we'll see. Uh, game number one, Lewis Cast North Miami. That should be a good game down there. Uh, the winner of that one will play the winner of game number two with Pioneer and Winnipeg. And again, Lewis Cast, one of the better defensive teams in the state. And how did they stop um, Caden Hanley? Yeah, and, and and well, and Laney Musall. Yeah, Laney has really come along. Right, Laney yeah. is a is a point guard now. Yeah, that can score. Yeah. <laughs> And do a lot of things. Right. And she's right. big. Right. So it's it's going to be a challenge for Lewis Cass. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm really looking forward to watching that game, hopefully de-stressing a little bit before the uh, the second game. Right. Um, so uh, that'll be interesting. Let's move on to the uh, the Winnemac boys setting at 8 and 9. They had a, a win versus OD on Monday, 60-39. to 39. But they uh, they lost at home last night to Rensselaer Central, 34-73. to 73. Um, there are three road games coming up, Saturday at Westville, Tuesday at Logan, and Thursday at North White. So. Right, well, the schedule is just bursting with games here. They're in the midst of a seven seven games in 15 days. Yeah. Um, we, right, they also had a big win over West that's, Central. That's at a home new on... term I've not heard before. The schedule is bursting with games. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, so uh, this is another team I'm not quite sure I know what to think of. I mean, they had it. You know, they, they get a tremendous win over North Judson at home in double overtime. Mm -hmm. Then they beat West Central, and I thought that was going to be an up-tempo game. It wound up being 40-35. to 35. Then they get OD, and they, they play really well, and they win 60-39. to 39. And they get a Rensselaer team that's been kind of, this isn't one of the greater Rensselaer teams, and then Rensselaer ran them off the floor last night. So I, I don't understand what's going on. I know John Malko's been dealing with a little bit of an ankle. Mm-hmm. Uh, problem, but he looked again. He, John, even when he's, it, it wasn't obvious to me. John just he glides on the court. He doesn't run. He just glides. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, and it's a team that's getting been getting balanced scoring. I defensively, when I, I saw them play OD in person on Monday night, I loved what I saw defensively. Um, Coach Springer likes that three-two zone, and it's a really nice defense because it's just hard. It's hard to get the ball in the paint against them. Uh, and they really they re, they really defend the paint well. And Aiden Jimenez was terrific in that game. He had eight points, and he really plays and he plays some nice physical defense. Uh, but then I don't I don't know I don't I'm not quite sure. I, I haven't seen the box score from the Rensselaer game yet, so I don't know what happened. But now let's see what they do because Westville they're really athletic. Mm -hmm. And and um, so that'll be a tough game. Yeah. And then. Uh, uh, Logan Logan Sport is is very athletic as well. Right, they're very athletic and well. While well, Logan Sport had a nice win in overtime over Harrison last night. Yeah, and then they go to North White. They should be heavily favored in that game. But yeah. I mean, let's. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see this. This team's been kind of up and down. Yeah, it's going to be curious to see how they do. Uh, three games on the road too. Right, right. So we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on the uh, Winnemac Warriors throughout the next week or yeah. two as they are bursting with games. Yeah. <laughs> But again, uh, the, the Mal with the Malco brothers and Jay, you know Jace Bendel's been. Pick I'm going to give him a shout out too. He's been picking it up on the offensive end as well. Yeah, yeah. 
And and Brendan Hines, you know, he's a guy who can go off for double figures. So and I, I really and his I younger really, brother, the freshman Jaden yeah, Hines, he's yeah. going to be a, he's going to be a really good player. He's yeah, just he's a freshman. Getting some, he's getting some minutes, and he's got some size and some athleticism on him. He's going to be a good player. Yeah, just he'll have to get in the weight room a little bit, but yeah, just a matter of time before he's got he really comes out and yeah. has a big game. Yep. All right, let's talk a little bit about the Tippecanoe Valley Vikings. Obviously, the girls team finishes the regular season at 18 and 3. They will be in action tonight in game number 2 taking yeah. on Rochester. We talk about playing with discipline on the when we talk about playing with discipline, you usually talk about offensive discipline, you know, making sure you get, you know, great shots, not good shots. Yeah. That was going to play with discipline on the defensive end in this game because Rochester is going to want to have nice long possessions. They're going to probe that defense, and you're going to have to just maintain your position and make sure you make sure you you complete the defensive possession with a defensive rebound. Yeah. Uh, again, I think they'll be pretty good if they if they and they basically did that when they played the first time. So. Yeah. Well, and, and like we talked about when we were talking about Rochester, mm-hmm. both of these teams are different than they were yeah. obviously back in November. I mean. Obviously, without Macy Peterson, but I think that uh, you have seen the progression of the Rochester freshman. Yeah, uh, Aubrey Wilson, mm-hmm. especially, uh, does not play like a freshman at this yeah. point. So it's going to be interesting. How how does the Zebras offense handle that just stifling pressure from Valley? Right, and you know the other thing about Valley, their defense wears you down by mm-hmm. the fourth. If you're not ahead by the fourth quarter, you're in deep trouble because. Yeah. I mean, it is just exhausting playing them. Mm-hmm. And again, I just I love Ave Golf's mentality on the court. She is just absolutely fearless. And uh, you know she's you know she had 24 in that win over Wawa C. She had another double figure game at Manchester. And they held a pretty high powered Manchester offense to 31 points. Mm-hmm. So and again, Chesney had four, Chesney Miller had 14 against Wawa C. So Chesney's. Uh, she's kind of I, I used to call her opportunistic on offense. I mean, mm-hmm. they, they don't really run plays for her, but she gets points yeah. just on turnovers and in the fast break. And she's, then she's been scoring more, right? You know. And Gabby Gonzalez, she just loves a challenge defensively, mm-hmm. and she is just built for big games. Uh, and you know, she she just blossomed in last year's postseason during their tournament run last yeah. year, and yeah. I expect a big game from her tonight as well. Yeah, the one thing that hasn't changed for Valley. Is they're going to run a lot of size at you, mm-hmm. you know? They got three, what, three or four six footers that they can, uh, and then Lucy Hayden, like you said, has been just playing so much better. Yeah, we don't even talk about Kelsey Cox that much, and she's yeah. got that fifteen foot baseline jumper is just automatic from her. Mm-hmm. You got to worry about her. And Kelsey's a really underrated passer as well out of the post. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, they, and then Carly Snyder, she can come off the bench. She's a She's six one and she can hit threes. Yeah, <laughs> but she can post up a little bit too. I mean, she's, yeah. yeah. I mean, they got a they got a lot of weapons. Yeah, but but it's they don't play they don't play fast like some of the previous Valley teams. Yeah. Uh, boys sitting at eleven and six, a pair of wins. They won at home on Saturday versus Jimtown. Nice win there, thirty six twenty nine. And then a, a rare road game for the Vikings. Uh, they went to Western last night. And they picked up a big win, forty seven twenty two. Uh, and they're off now until Tuesday where they host North Miami. I have a feeling we're going to say this, some of the same things about the Valley boys that we've been saying about the Valley girls. Their defense is just, it's a nightmare to face them because they are just so big and so long and they can get out on the perimeter and guard you. And boy, you know, Davis Davis Cowan, um, I wouldn't, he, he's not a big time scorer, but he had 11 in the win over Western last night. And when you add that with the defense that he plays, and he, I mean, he, and he's for a sophomore. He's he's kind of underrated, strong, mm-hmm. and he just disrupts your offense. And then with Shepard and Johnson and Nakasi, I mean, those are three big guys, six five, six six, six six. How do you score in the paint against these guys? Yeah, and you know, the, I mean, they held Jimtown to twenty nine and Western to twenty two. Now they now they have been struggling offensively a little bit. Who's led them in scoring the last two games? Kyler Johnson. He had 13 mm-hmm. against Jimtown and 14 against Western. So mm-hmm. if, if they can get Kyler going consistently and then get Steven, Ian Cooksey has been in a little bit of a slump, but they can get Ian shooting well and get Steven going in, in the post, boy, then then you're really just, they become harder to defend. I'm a little bit surprised by some of the problems they've had scoring, though. 
but the defense has been so good it hasn't mattered too much. Now you see what they got coming up. They got North Miami coming up on Tuesday, and then they got that makeup game with Knox next Friday. Mm-hmm. So they want to collect some wins now because look at those last three games. At Kokomo, home with Warsaw, home with South Bend, Washington. Hmm. That will get you ready for a tournament, state tournament run, hopefully. You want to go do the Kokomo game? Kind of. <laughs> that's that's one worth uh, looking into. That's, I would love to go down the Memorial Gymnasium and, and do a game. I might be in Evansville that day, but all right, I don't know where I'll be, but maybe. Huh. <sighs> That's the state state wrestling day. Yeah, Kokomo's on the way home. <laughs> That'd be a fun one. That would be a fun one. I have to take a cameraman that could keep up with Flory. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be interesting. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Valley obviously uh, having a really good year, and they, they I think, kind of like with the girls. I mean, they've just yeah. got, uh, like you said. You know, Cassie's been Cooksey's been a little bit off, and you've had people step up, and I noticed that with uh, I didn't know last night too, but you know Johnson really yeah has stepped up for him. So right, and Kyler's just a load in the paint, so to stop in the paint because he I mean he he's got good moves, and Kyler's a good passer as mm-hmm. well. So yeah, uh, again, uh, you know, again it, it's going to be uh, again they want to finish well, but it's going to be a tough sectional. Um, obviously, once they get once they get to once they get to March, so finishing strong is going to be huge. Yeah. All right. Any final thoughts here? Uh, Want to wish all of our teams that are still in action good luck. You know, Argus uh, playing tonight, Caston playing tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Rochester and Valley playing tonight. Winnemac and Pioneer playing tonight yeah. against each other. So. Uh, we'll have coverage of, uh, you know, go to IHSA TV. We'll have coverage of both games tonight from yeah. uh, Rochester, and we'll have coverage of Pioneer Winnemac, and we'll have coverage of Caston versus South Newton as well. I want to give a shout-out to Kendall Craig on the girls' swimming team at Valley. She made the fin- sectional final in the, uh, I believe it was the 200 freestyle. Okay, and the A final. Yeah, so awesome. she's going to the final. Chloe Chan, a Pioneer, made the final in the 100 breaststroke, qualified fourth. I think she finished second in that event last year. Okay. Uh, she, in fact, she's finished in the top three each of the last two years. Mm-hmm. Wanted to give her a shout-out as well. Wanted to give a shout-out to the Winnemac wrestling team. Uh, they, first of all, they win conference for the sixth straight year. Then they get ten kids sent to regional. That is just great for yeah. them. We'll see how yeah. many of the ten they can get to semi-state. Uh, they're going to be underdogs in about nine of the ten matches. Yeah. Uh, they were, uh, yeah, we didn't really talk a lot about them. They were up at Plymouth as well, mm-hmm. you know, the first time for them being there as well. Right. So we'll see how Talon Garner does. I think at 175, he might have the best chance to advance. Uh, Willis Dennis at 138 might have a chance. But, again, uh, some of their kids are just, uh, they, they have some tough matches if they want to get to semi-state. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I want to give a shout-out and shout-out to Kasten's, uh mm-hmm. Jackson Robbins and Pete Duvall, who are yeah. going to semi-state as well. Our, our boy Pete. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's going up there. He's going, <laughs> and I, I, I tried to get him, you know, talked off the fence. He's going to South Newton tonight, going to Penn in the morning, and then uh, going back to South Newton hopefully tomorrow night. So We'll give a shout-out to the three uh, Pioneer wrestlers who are going to the Logansport Regional. Eli Guffey was third at 144 at sectional. Brandon Sturette, who was fourth at 150. And Colton Baker, who was fourth at 215. Yeah. Colton Baker gets Colt Chicoin from uh, McCutcheon in the regional. He's only ranked number two in the state. That's it? Yeah. Hmm. Well, he could have been number one. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's number two. I think Alex Deming is like number four. So just to give you an idea of where he's at, yeah. Oof. And he's undefeated. Chicoin Somebody... is undefeated. I think his sister plays volleyball at Purdue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that name sounds familiar. Yeah. Gotcha. So he's, yeah, Colton's got his hands full, but congratulations just to get this far. Uh, Eli Guffey was a, t- uh, was a Hoosier North champion and third at the sectional as well, so he's having a great year. All right. I want to give a shout out as well as, uh, yeah, uh, Brandon Sturette. All right. Well, good luck to all of our girls' basketball teams tonight as they try to advance to a sectional championship, and uh, good luck to all of the wrestlers tomorrow who are trying to advance to semi-state next week. Yeah, and keep it up, Ball State women's basketball. I saw they're in, they're in bracketology now. They're yeah, like in a number thirteen seed if they can get there. I guess we, yeah, 
Yeah, get into the NCAAs. Yeah. It's been a little while since we've seen that. Yeah. So, all right, that'll wrap it up here for this week. We'll be back next week. We'll talk some more sports.